So let's call the meeting to order. We're all set with the various media. Blah, blah. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. It is 631. Do we have any agenda, uh, additions to the agenda? Not for me. I don't see any on the select board memo. Does anybody else have any additions? No. no. Okay. Bruce, so. when are we going to give the animal control officer's authority to seize unlicensed dogs? Is that coming up next meeting usually? Usually it comes in June. In June, okay. Uh, when we do the warrant thing. Okay. Yeah, it's usually the first or second meeting, depending on how it plays out. Okay. You still have authority, though, don't you? Um, I'm, I'm thinking that I can at least argue that I have that authority from last year. Oh, yeah. I so. It doesn't end yeah. until it ends. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so that's not a non, non addition. Non -addition. Yeah. Ah, review of minutes from um, April 18th. Recording in progress. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, that's all right. We haven't done anything important. No. So has anybody had a chance to review the minutes? Yeah. I did, but I wasn't at the meeting, so I don't know if I should uh, move to approve them. They were very informative and well written, but... I have some amendments to make. I was going to say, it like Carlos okay. wasn't so sure so about that. <laughs> I think in general they're very informative, well written, and I have some amendments to make. We're talking April 18th? Yes. Okay. So, second page. Yeah. At the end of the discussion on the proposed shade tree preservation plan, I would like some record of uh, my comments on the town plans. And I have some language which I can email you to you, Bruce. Um, okay. E Mr. Ed and I have pointed out that East Montpelier Town plans consider roadside trees to be part of the scenic beauty of East Montpelier and endorse the system of a tree warden working with others to determine how to manage them. You'd like to add that? Uh, after, um, after, after, I believe chronologically it came after Mr. Kate's comments. Yeah. Mr. Kate. Yeah. So it, it would be the penultimate paragraph. Yeah. Okay. And then under the WEC annual meeting voting authorization, I thought it behooved us to explain why we chose two out of the seven candidates to vote for. And Bruce thinks maybe not. I, I'm thinking maybe not. <laughs> okay. Do you want to explain? Uh, Steve Farnham, you basically voted for him because you thought he was on board. Mm -hmm. and, and because those of us, well, here, here's what I put uh, as suggested. Let's see what people think. Um, I pointed out at the end of the second, no, the first paragraph, two of the board slots are open as the incumbents are not running for re-election. Re and that sets the stage for, at the end of the second paragraph, writing, one candidate was chosen because he is an incumbent on the grounds that the board benefits from <coughs> continuity and select board members respect his work. The other is an East Montpelier resident whose background brings useful expertise to the board. Hmm. That's, that's what we discussed. It is what you discussed. If that's what you want, go for it. Yeah. I think when we're casting votes on behalf of the town, that it's, um, it's worthwhile to let people know why. Right. I would argue if they want to know why, they should see the, the uh, okay. No one is ask. ever going to read those minutes. As opposed to reading the minutes. Because <laughs> <laughs> the nuance is always lost in the minutes. But um, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll email all this to you. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Sounds good. What's another one? That's it. Oh, that's it, Carl. Okay. I make a motion. We accept the the minutes uh, with the amendments for April eighteenth, two thousand twenty-two. So Judith is here. Do you want to ask her if she has any? Oh, hi, hi Judith. Where is she? Where is she? I don't see her. I'm oh, here. oh, I'm she's behind that screen thing. Yes. Hey. Oh. There you are. Oh, hi. 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 I, I okay. don't. I. I I just caught the, caught the tail end of Carl's amendment, though. I apologize. Um, could you just quickly summarize, Carl, what the gist was, if that's okay? Explaining why we voted for the two wet board members that we voted for. Uh, one was an incumbent, and we respect his work, and, and you need continuity on a board. And the other is uh, an East Montpelier resident who brings valuable skills to the board. 
Right. Not that I don't know that we don't respect his work, but I don't remember that we said that, but. I, I remember talking about working with him and, and knowing him and respecting it, and I believe you Yes, yeah, I remember what Carl said, and I do too, so. We, we concurred that it, we felt that he would be a worthy member of yes. the WEC board, yep. and he already has been, and we know his work, so yep. that's why we had the discussion. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. It's just kind of going forward, and I brought this up before. We, when we say the board feels or the board said, not all the time, we don't all say certain things. Some of us might say it, like Carl might have said that. We all voted that way, and I agree. But in terms of what was said, um, sometimes we should perhaps attribute it to its source. Well, the language, so I was paraphrasing at your request for the gist. The language actually okay, says right. select board members respect his work. Generally. Yeah. It just says select board members. It wasn't specific to the member saying. It does not name the select board member, right. but it does not say the board respects the board. <laughs> starting to like my version better now? No. <laughs> Either one works for me. Yeah. So I guess it doesn't work for Judith. Well, I, I guess I don't, I don't see the problem with saying both Carl and Seth know and respect his work or something like that. I don't know the person, so I, I don't. By saying select board members, okay. um, it suggests that all of us, and I'm sure his work is, I, I can't personally say that. So I just feel uncomfortable having an attribution or an inference that I said that. Shame on you, Russ. <laughs> okay, sounds good. So you'll attribute it to you and I? Yep. Okay. Um, Thank you. So we have a motion. And so I'm wait a minute, did you have any? There was another. Did, what was no, your other thing? That's all good. No, there's one. No other additions. Yes, yeah, you're the first one you corrected about the tree. Yeah, she didn't say. Anything oh, okay, that. but she didn't hear that. I don't know whether she heard that. Or not. <laughs> she came in on the end of it. There was one more um, amendment that Carl introduced. That I don't think you heard you about the tree. Uh, the tree plan. Is that Carl wanted to put in the minutes that he mentioned the town plan and how the tree plan he felt fits into the town plan? Is that correct? Correct. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that was the other addition to the minutes. You okay with that? Yeah, because you're attributing it to Carl. Yeah. Yes. That's fine. Oh, we are. Carl yeah. is feeling that he really wants to have that in the minutes. What he said. So that's fine. Okay. So, so I made. Have, so I. I you made a motion. Continue with my motion yeah. um, with the other with the new added changes. No, but you made it. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll amend it. I'll amend it to the add the added changes. Yeah, there was no second. So there's no second. second. Now there's a second. Okay. Who's the second? Me. You. Oh, good. All those in favor of approving the April 18th minutes, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it. They do have it. Um, okay. Um, so we should probably say something about Gina being here. This is your first meeting. Yes. Um, everyone recognizes Gina being here. Hi, Gina. Oh, right. Welcome, Gina. So we <laughs> we welcome you, you formally. I'm sorry um, to get you there. <laughs> and we want to be in our best behavior tonight. Oh. Right. <laughs> Why? We're not going to be able to sustain that. <laughs> Keep it real. Keep it real. It is real. Um, okay. So we did the minutes. No. We have another set of minutes, don't we? Oh, yeah, April 20th. 20th. Yeah. Oh, that's right. April 20th. Uh, right here. And this is very short. I move to approve it. I'll second that. Any further comment? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The eyes appear to have it. They do have it. Okay. The minutes are done. Public comment. Public. Not it. Okay. Let's go on to the next item, which is B. Discussion of revolving loan fund program. And Rebecca Schrader is, is here. our revolving loan fund advisor. She is here. Hi, Rebecca. Hello. Hello. 
So you were on the floor, so to speak. All right. So uh, when last we met, uh, or at least when last I met with you, um, we had talked about some options for the revolving loan fund since we had deobligated the funds from um, the state sort of, uh, I guess, business fund that they had started at the beginning of the COVID pandemic, but then um, when a number of other federal and state programs came in place, um, it was kind of redundant and obsolete. So, uh, so we took that money back. And so now we are still back to around 73,000. Um, and uh, we had come up with some proposals um, that I then checked with uh, the state on. Um, to see about their feasibility. So uh, the first one was um, the question of whether we could do a uh, no interest loan to uh, CV Fiber for um, basically as kind of a way to allow them to get started on work um, in anticipate, and then they would pay back that loan when uh, the town received ARPA fund, it's next round of ARPA funds, um, and they would use those ARPA funds to pay back the revolving loan fund. Um, so uh, with that, there are, uh, it is possibly possible. <laughs> um, there are a number of uh, other requirements that we would have to meet to be able to use the money for that. So since this comes from a community development block grant, um, it would have to serve the people that it serves and beneficiaries would have to be 51% of them would have to fall in the low to moderate income. And if the funds were going to be used for construction, there are a number of, um, requirements around the construction process that the state would, uh, be involved in oversight and review for environmental, um, and, uh, construction engineering issues, um, which they, I would imagine they already are to some degree because I think there's already some federal funds, um, you know, that CV Fiber is working with, but we would have to get um, signed onto those and, and have um, the ACCD folks uh, sign up on those as well. So um, the question I guess would be is, if it's worth, if you think it's worth that work to figure out, um, and basically we would need to know exactly what the purpose of the funds would be. So if the purpose of the funds would be used for like design, then we wouldn't have to meet those environmental review uh, requirements. We would still have to meet the, um, the population requirements. So what we would need from CV Fiber is, um, a map, uh, you know, site map of where they're planning on putting the first miles of fiber, um, and then uh, analyzing those census tracts to see if they're fifty-one percent low to moderate income. Okay, um, so I think I was a proponent of of that when you were last with us, uh, Becca, and uh, I reached out to CV Fiber both by email and by telephone, and I didn't get any response to my suggestion that we might use this money for them. So I don't know why that was. Um, you know, it's possible that they don't uh, need it. the new organization, have, do they have a new director now since last fall? Yeah, I think the executive director just started maybe last week. Was it that recent? Okay. Um, so, you know, maybe another outreach would, would um, yield better results. But um, just thinking aloud, given their broad mandate to provide fiber to the whole region and the fact that they're going to put it first in the areas that are underserved, not by income, but by existing internet connections, I'm not sure that it would be easy to, for them to meet that, to that mandate of 51% being of a certain income level. Well, plus the fact is you're predicating that on the ARPA money coming in. Yeah. That they we still have, have questions about Yeah, that. I mean, yes. we don't even know if we can do that. Yes. 
So it's like, yes. yeah. yeah. Sounds like, sounds like. It sounds like, I mean, it sounds like that would be a huge pain. I mean, from what you describe, like, okay, it's it maybe doable, but it sounds like a huge pain for $74,000 on a multi gajillion dollar enterprise. And I, yeah. you know, I don't see the value in that. Right. We would, we would need a lot of information from them too. It would be, it would be a burden, you know, it would be a time burden on our end and theirs. Yeah. There's always strings, you know, multiple strings that you have to. And it's a loan to pay back. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So they probably get, probably getting loans from other sources. Well, they're getting, aren't they getting a lot of money from some bill? We, we, don't, know. Bill? I, we don't know. I don't know how much well, they have in their coffers. I don't know. I mean, the idea was that, yes, they've been promised all this money. Right. Or, or it's been dangled in front of them very enticingly. But uh, how much do they actually have to be doing the work right now? Well, it sounds like this would be a far reach, so we better not. Yeah. Yeah. Let's wait and see if you're interested. I'm willing to drop it. Yeah. At least right. for the moment. Yeah. So what was the next thing on your agenda? So we'll put that in the shelf for the moment. But. Okay. So then some of the other uh, things that we had talked about were things that would, um, would be related to housing. Um, specifically, uh, some of the things we had talked about were, were related to rental housing. Um, but I think it's a good idea to, to maybe just step back and uh, talk about, so the, you know, the, basically the, the funds can go in, in one of three directions. Um, one is for, you know, the, the municipality can use it for public projects, which is what the, you know, the internet um, one would have been. Um, it can be used for housing or it can be used for, to support small businesses. And um, in our last conversation, it, sound, it seemed like, um, and as most of you know, the, the revolving loan fund um, discussions about the revolving loan fund have kind of gone round and round and round for years, um, but the loan fund has not necessarily revolved. Um, so uh, what some of the discussions that we had had have gone back and forth, like, do we want to be focused on small business? Do we want to be focused on housing? And um, it sounded like people were leaning more towards housing um, when we met last time. And we had talked about two possibilities, one being a um, mini grant program for landlords to, uh, to do energy efficiency projects for rental housing, um, which would then benefit the tenants who are often paying, you know, if the tenants are paying the utilities, um, then that's a, an ultimate benefit for them. Um, and then we had also talked about a security deposit grant or no interest loan program. Um, either of those might be, are, are probably eligible for the funds. But what we get back to is the issue of capacity. So if we do either of those programs, the town then has to run it. So that means, you know, time on the treasurer, time on, uh, you know, you'd, you'd want to, you would need to put up put together a committee again, um, come up with an application process, et cetera, et cetera. So um, in the past, we had talked about when we were looking at small business um, possibilities, working with um, possibly Community Capital of Vermont um, or another uh, loan fund that works with small businesses to do um, that sort of work. Um, if we want to go the housing route, there are also organizations like Downstreet um, and that kind of thing that also do that kind of work. And so um, in my conversations with the folks at the state, um, they were really suggesting that we find a, an organization like Downstreet. Um, and one of the things that they're gonna be doing for us is putting together a, a group of organizations that we could choose from that would be good, you know, that do similar work with other revolving loan funds. And, um, and then we would assign the funds to them. And uh, what would happen is for the first two years, um, they, those funds would definitely be dedicated for East Montpelier residents. And then after that, they would not necessarily be dedicated for East Montpelier residents, but East Montpelier residents would still be, um, you know, open to apply for them. 
And so then what that would do is it would put the town and, and me and, um, you know, the role of the revolving loan fund um, in terms of the town's responsibility, it would put that much more in the arena of marketing and sharing information. So maybe I set up a table at town meeting day, maybe we put something in the signpost. We have a, um, a presence on the website where we explain here are the things that you can apply for and here's how you go and apply for them, but we're not doing all the administration of actually running the loan fund, um, which historically East Montpelier, which, and they're not alone in that, um, just doesn't really have the capacity to do because um, it's a lot to ask of volunteers and it's also a lot to ask as an additional duty for, um, for employees of the town. So, um, so my recommendation would be if you, if you want to go a housing route, which I think, you know, just, um, I you think housing is, has always been a big issue, but is increasingly difficult to come by um, in this day and age, um, that uh, we should pursue um, finding an organization, assigning the funds to them, and then I could come back with, um, well, I would come back with that organization. They would do a proposal and, and present before the select board. And then the next step after that would be for me to come back and say, here is my plan for, or my ideas for how we make sure that people know this money is there so they can actually get access to it. Sounds like a good idea. The last one. <laughs> Give the money or explore the possibility of giving the money to an organization that's going to target housing, if that's what we so choose. And then East Montpelier has priority for two years, you said? Or is that yes. how they all work? Yeah. Yep. I so think so then, th this organization would not be Downstreet. It would be would a community organization that Downstreet would help us identify. Is that correct? No, it might, it might be downstreet. Um, so the, the grants management folks at ACCD would um, help me in identifying which organization would be best for, for assigning the funds. And so that, that might be downstreet um, and there might be some other options as well. She, so Cassie from, um, I can't think of her last name right now, but um, she's gonna get back to me with, um, with a list of organizations that would be that would be potential, and then I'll reach out to them to come up with a proposal for the board. Um, they would make that proposal. You could vote to assign the funds then, and then the next step after that would be to come up with a kind of marketing and communications plan for it to make sure people know the funds are there, especially in that first two years, so that we can really make sure that East Montpelier residents can um, get a good shot at it. Yeah, that's, that's a good plan. Because we don't have the resources, obviously, to administer the money. Right. So if we give it to another organization that has a resource to do that, that's the way to go. Right. And and East Montpelier could still take advantage of it. What? Um, Which would in, be, in this yeah. proposal that got? Can they hear? Do it? we need to? I think so. She's, can, she's can you hear us? Okay. Us. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Something changed in the audio here in the room. Which yeah. What made us question? Triggers our concern, yes. so to speak. <laughs> uh, so, do you need any input tonight from the select board as you go out on this quest for organizations to uh, 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 assign the money to as to whether we would prefer this security deposit loan grant program or the mini grants for energy efficiency? Um, no, not necessarily. I just need to know that housing, if, if we want to go to housing versus small business, um, that's really the, the umbrella. And then we can, um, you know, once the organization is identified, we can let them know these were the, the plans that we had actually come up with. Housing. Yeah. I, I think that housing direction is what we feel would be the best direction at this moment. Okay. And thank you. I think I think you're you're on the track that will work for us. So we don't because we want to be able to give this money to a worthy organization that's going to do uh, housing as we perceive it, 
And uh, we don't have the resources, obviously, to do that ourselves. So I think this is the best way to, to move the money on yes. instead of just sitting there. Yeah. And we have to do that. So you want to get a board consensus on that? Well, that's... I you want board? don't have a problem with it at all, right? Okay, we have two other members tuning in. What do you think, Amy and Judith? I think it makes sense to explore organizations that might be able to um, funnel the funds. I think housing is a critical need and I think we have money to help address the shortage. I think that's a great thing to do. And, and the money's been sitting there for a while. That's the problem. Like for how many years? I mean, it's, it's it become up. like this. Yeah. But it's kind of become this $74,000 albatross we can't get. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's a good idea to explore that. You can keep that money forever as long as it goes in and out and is used for the right yeah. thing. And but, you, but you can't just sit on it. No, the town of Hardwick has almost 800000 worth of that money. Wow. And they've been using it since 1988. But this will sign it away. Right, I know that. Uh, the That's, last one we assigned away, the Fairmont ones. Yeah turned into good money for community capital. Right, yeah. This seems like the, since we're never going to you, get our act together, this seems well, like a that's fair why thing. I agree. We could, okay, we could find a worthy recipient in East Montpelier, but we don't have the machinery. You don't have a policy in place, you don't have any applications in place, you don't have any yeah, of that stuff. we don't have the machinery to do it. That's right. So let's move it on to somebody that does. Yeah. It sounds like a great idea. Yeah. So I think we have board consensus. I, I don't want to speak that term, but everyone seems to be on board, Rebecca. So I applaud your efforts and move us in that direction, please. Okay, great. So I'll, um, I'll work with uh, ACCD to get a list of organizations and um, hopefully in the next month or two, we can have them come give a proposal. And then, um, and then, uh, we should hopefully be able then to kick off um, kind of communications and marketing about it um, with the new fiscal year. Yes. Yes. Sounds good. Okay. If you need any more from us, just let us know. All right. Great. Well, thank you very much. Thanks, Becca. Thank you for all your work. Thank you, Becca. A lot of work. Do we need to take a pause for the ORCA folks? No? Okay. Okay. All right, so um, we're going to move to item C then, since we're done with Rebecca. We did a lot of work for us. But thank God we didn't burden her with the CV fiber thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, the next item is C. It's discussion and proposed amendments to the East Montpelier Land Use and Development Regulations. So, I trust everyone's had a chance to read over the regulations or the changes Peruse or not. Them. Peruse them? Yeah. yeah. I've got lots of them here in front of me. So I've been keeping the copy and looking at them when I had a chance. Uh, so. So, the board annotated memo says that this is designed to be an initial general discussion yeah once complete the board should determine the next steps for this process yeah so how, how do we want to go about this today um but we first wanted the board to anybody that so chose to go through the regulations and if they had questions and comments mm -hmm. So we wanted to go through that first. So everyone had a chance to familiarize ourselves with the plan, or the changes to the plan. So we had homework to do. Have you been working on John? I have copious notes in here, but I didn't find anything, any major issues as far as I was concerned. Well, you, you did comment the last time we talked about this is how you didn't realize East Montpelier had <laughs> such, um, what? Uh, invasive. Invasive. I think that. Yeah, they tell you when you take yeah. down your snow fence and which how exactly. you fence. Exactly. So um, <laughs> that's not part of this. So, <laughs> so I don't care. It's already there. It's, it's, it's. Uh, yeah, and perhaps it hasn't. I mean, is there something we should take out to make no, it less not, invasive? No. No. I took my snow fence down today. I was a day late. 
<laughs> I think it was April 30th, right? Yeah. But I was out of town. I figured that Bruce would be up there with a big sticker to stick on my door saying yeah. you're in violation of the zoning regulations for snow fences. He was out cruising today. <laughs> okay, but you've got to realize. You started me into that, this. No? That Bruce um, doesn't like to do enforcement. I, I'm, I'm trying not to be impolite and say something rude, but he's not going to go around with a big stick. Okay. He's not going to. I but we have a new town administrator that may like that activity, so perhaps we should take some of that stuff out. <laughs> well, then we'll let you do it. That's right. That's not a town administrator. That's right. But maybe our new zoning administrator will like that. So maybe we should take out um, various enforcement possibilities in there. Is that true? If you probably don't want to go down that road. No. Well, we don't want to go down the road if we have another zoning administrator that thinks they should be enforcing. Well, if you want the planning commission to go down that road, you might want to tell them that. But you might want to give them some parameters. For yeah. Which to what to touch and what not to touch. Yeah. 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 So. And, and if we do go down that road, then they need to make some changes, hold another hearing, send us, vote on it, send us the changes. Did you, is so, there anything that anybody found in there that was overly invasive besides snow fences? And, and, your, <laughs> and, your, and, and, your, and any fences you build, you got to make sure that you have the front side facing out and the back side facing in. If you reverse that, you could be in trouble. So I, okay. I had a question about setbacks. No, that's, that's a different thing. Yes. Right. We're moving on. Okay, well, we'll just talk about fences first. We so um, I just thought it was kind of funny. Okay, so what you're saying is there is an opening there that if someone want to enforce against fences that had the board turned the wrong way, yeah, that that could happen. Right. That's what I took. That's how I took I it. I think we should mention that. <laughs> as I'm not in favor of that. <laughs> so what I'm saying is we have a zoning administrator that doesn't like to go around looking at fences in the wrong side of the board. He may not even know the difference. But the next zoning administrator may choose to go around looking at fences and they may know the difference between a board that's turned the wrong way. What do you think? You don't care? You're Not thinking. really. I don't like to leave my snow fence up year round anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to mow around it. <laughs> I think we should make that comment that it's a little invasive about the fences. Um, I don't think we should make that comment. I, I guess I think it might have been John or someone talking about um, I mean, I don't know that we should predict or anticipate what the new zoning administrator, whether he or she, um, their comfort level with various varying aspects of the um, bylaws. I mean, the, if if their job is to enforce things, then that's their job. Um, we shouldn't yeah. we shouldn't wait to kind of you know, see how they feel about it. I, I, or maybe I misunderstood what you're saying, but um, I think, you know, for most folk, it's like John that, oh golly, I forgot and you're a couple of days late and no one cares. Um, but, you know, just having the requirement for how it should go up, it's, you know, what we hope people do. Obviously not everyone will, but the hope is that they do. And if you don't put in what you want people to do, people might not do it or might keep it up their snow fence up all summer. We have a reading so group in my neighborhood where we look at the land use regulations so we make sure that we follow the snow fence rules. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so I'm, gonna, I'm not really joking. It's like if you have things in the plan that are supposed to be enforced, like the snow fence, do you want that in there? Because someone may want to enforce and if so, you have it in there, then they will enforce it. So let's take a step back. Okay. What we're doing right now is we're reviewing proposed yes. changes that yep. the Planning Commission has given to us. Right. And what you're suggesting is that there are other additional changes uh, that, uh, that you've identified that you think maybe should happen. Oh, I'm... Do, do we need to have that discussion tonight, or is that... I mean, we have forever to talk with the Planning Commission. Maybe we should be creating a parking lot and say, okay, Planning Commission, here are some other issues that we'd like you to take a look at for revising these. I just was commenting on what John commented on, that if there's enforcement aspects to the plan that we haven't followed in the past, I'm saying beware 
because enforcement actions can be enforced, especially if you have them in the plan. And we haven't always enforced things in East Montpelier, but they're in here. And none of these things you've identified are proposed new changes from the Planning Commission. I don't know that they are or not. No, no they're not. They're, they're, they're existing. Already they're, they're already there. Like we've already right. moved beyond those. But we can years move ago. on in the discussion because you have setback comments. I have setback comments. And we'll just keep that in the back shelf for the moment. Yeah. All right. So let's. Let's say what you're going to say. Yeah, or it's, or it's we have half questions. an hour to bat this around, mm -hmm. so it's fine. But anyway, so we'll setbacks. Setbacks is something that I have talked with the planning commission about for a, no yes. a number of times yeah. over uh, quite a few years, mm -hmm. and I have been concerned that it's illegal to build things in Montpelier, East Montpelier, that look like East Montpelier does right now, because of setback requirements. Mm -hmm. um, what and my personal example with this was that uh, when I had a renovation done on my house in 2003, then uh, to work on the back deck, the back deck to make it smaller actually, but to, to do work on the back deck, I required a waiver because the back deck was too close to the road, and uh, you know that I was able to get the waiver because it had been an existing thing there and so on and so forth. There's nothing that I had done to aggravate the condition, but you know, people shouldn't have to go in to get waivers to uh, work on their back decks because they're too close to the road. And uh, um, they took that into account and uh, at least they, they reduced it. the setback requirements. And I want to understand what they have done here. Apparently it's the same for all zones. So I'm just looking at page seven. Okay. And it's talking about, uh, just right at the top, notwithstanding the front setback set forth in subsection D, the front setback for all lots shall be the existing distance from the point of the dwelling that is closest to the road right of way, if it's less than that standard, providing that the lot was in existence prior to September 15th, 1982, and a few other things related to that. Uh, so... One of my questions is, it says the dwelling, and I, uh, what comes to mind for me is a garage on my road that was built originally quite close to the road, and there were some problems given the zoning regulations and the setbacks with authorizing rebuilding it. And I'm wondering, and, and perhaps Bruce, you can tell me, uh, whether this new language would have affected that situation at all. So no. Okay. The, what you're looking at is a revision of the relaxation that was put in, in zone for Zone D about 20 years ago. Okay. Expanded to Zone E, so both Zone D and Zone E, for lots that were smaller than three acres. What they're doing this time around is taking that concept and applying it to all zones. Okay. What it's saying is if you're a developed house, like what you've talked about, yeah. your front setback will be your front setback. Whatever it is now, it will be. Are you expecting that? That's your dwelling yeah. setback. Right. Not, not a garage that's sitting on the right of what you like the one you're talking about. Not accessory buildings. Whereas your house, is your now front setback would now be your front okay. of your house. Okay. Whereas Basically, right now, it's yeah. still true that much of your house is not conformed. Okay. Uh, oh, it would no longer be true. Right. You would now be conforming to the front setback. Because okay. you can go to the closest setback to the road of, of the properties already in nonconformance. No, the dwelling. Right. Yes. Right. Dwelling. The dwelling. No, I meant I meant the building that's in nonconformance. You can go back to to the most nonconforming yes. piece of property uh, of well, now building. Well, it's conforming because it is what it is. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The problem that Carl's saying though is his garage is still not conforming. He still can't. It's, it's just the dwelling. It's, my it's not the accessory right. building. But it's pre-existing. Yeah. So. Non-conformity. This is a situation that probably shouldn't be discussed too much because it went to DRB. There was a threatened case. Action. So let that one go a little bit. But it does not change that situation at all. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. that is a garage versus a, okay. a dwelling. dwelling front. And then some of us have barns, which are closer to the road. Yeah. That, that people build barns close to roads. Yeah. Well, uh, back in the day. Yeah. Same it doesn't thing. affect that. It doesn't, it would affect that part of the barn that is behind the front line of the 
dwelling. Okay. But it wouldn't affect the part that is closer to the road. Okay. What if hypothetically the barn happens to be across the street from the road? Well, then it would apply the to front the setback of the barn across the street. Okay. Yeah. So if it's non-conforming now, it's non-conforming. Period. It yeah. wouldn't. It wouldn't apply across. And the you street. can't make it more non-conforming. <laughs> Without a waiver, you could get a or waiver. something. Yes. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. But okay. if you're in agriculture, I don't I get a waiver. I go if I'm in the town right away, and it might, I don't conform to a setback. I go to the state because it's agricultural. They, that I have to go to the secretary of agriculture, and, and they can approve it or disapprove it. Right. Yeah. And they've always approved it, and they've come out, and we've had discussion, and I've built lots of buildings additions. In the town right but the so-called normal folks right. don't have that opportunity. No, they, but they can go to the most DRB mm -hmm. and they can get a waiver. And what's special about September 15th, 1982? That was the date of a amendment to the zone breaks. Okay. That's the mm -hmm. one that was chosen for the, those updates in the early 2000s that created this in the first place. Mm -hmm. And as I said, they just pulled this forward mm -hmm. and expanded its application. Because you can't go back, you can't go and, and suddenly make, you can make everybody non-conforming, but you can't make them move everything if you, ch if you change rules and suddenly make people non-conforming. Yeah. yeah. And so that's why they always have like a, bi a major date when that regulation was passed. And that was when we last altered our districts. That's yeah. when, you may not remember this at all, but we had a lot more zone E, so the seven acre zone, Mm -hmm. And we created a big chunk on Route 14 that went from Zone E to Zone D. And that initial foray into this uh, clause was for Zone D. So they targeted that date when those regs went live to be the, the start date of all of this. Okay. So why would we not want to say, all, everybody who's built right now is conforming. They're, because they're not conforming. But they can be a, an existing non-conformity. Right. Why would we want to say that somebody whose house was in place on September 14th, 1982, closer to the road than the official setback distances, fine, you're good to go, but somebody who moved in the next year in a house, sorry, you're not conforming. That house should have been conforming when it was built. Right. After 82. The concept it was even they caught, they chose that date because yeah. that was the last time they altered the dynamic for the yeah. districts. So mm -hmm. everything before 82 this applies. They might have been so non conforming after, back then. Everything after should apply the rules that I we have. Should apply. Right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, but, but Kyle, and I'm not trying to single you out, but you have talked about the setbacks are the 75 feet from the center of the road was. Not a good idea. Right. And I agree with you on that. Right. But did we address that in this document? Yeah. Yeah. So now the doc so now the setback's what? On the which zone? Building. It okay. depends on the zone you're in. Choose a zone. Okay, what about zone E? Alright, let's look at zone E. This, this is a really which good page? time for me not to bring which my glasses. Page? Uh page twenty. Page twenty, okay. And the uh, setbacks have been changed to forty feet from center lines. Right okay. now they're seventy-five. Yep. And twenty-five feet side and rear, right now they're fifty. Yeah. Those seem reasonable. Yeah, that's a lot better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is a lot that's better. Great. Yeah. So forty feet from center line is essentially uh, pretty close. Pretty close. Yeah, yeah because yeah. the travel width and roads are 20, 25 feet. The, so the, you're, you're already around 15 feet by the time yeah. you get to the ro edge of the road. Mm -hmm. So if it's 40 or 25 feet yeah. from the edge of the travel. You have to shovel as much snow for your driveway. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's good. Yes. But what about a different zone? Pick a zone. Well, that's as bad as it's going to be because that would be okay. the most better. Oh, okay. So it's good. Well, I, I'm just taking a personal example. Okay. <laughs> so you can just go I back. Zone D, to is, zone D is the same. Yep. Mm -hmm. Zone C has the same 40 foot with 15 foot side and rear. Mm -hmm. Wow. Good. Zone From 25, D right? Was it 25? Is 40 and 15. Oh. Yes. Mm -hmm. It was 25. And zone A is also 40 and 15. 
And then you have the new zones that have ones none of us even know yet. 40 and 15 for the one acre version of it. Mm -hmm. And then the smaller ones have 40 and 10. Mm. All right, well, that's... And I'm in the, the second that's a good zone, move. The, first, the second zone. Okay. Now, the lot size in zone E, what... Have they figured Nothing that out? Nothing happened there. Nothing's happened yet? No, no... There was intentionally no changes to lot sizes in the existing zones. Okay, at this point. Yeah, or all we did was overlay the that village master plan yes. map dimension okay. over the existing zones in yep. this area. Yeah. So and those are the only ones that changed. So that's yeah, the only that changed. So, yeah. Those are, yeah. so right. anything outside of that overlay right. is still the same as it was for lot size. Yes. Not for these other standards that we just No, did. yeah, I get that. Lot size was a concern of mine. Yeah, they, they weren't trying to touch that in this. That was what this scuppered the whole thing last years time. Ago. Yeah, yeah. So they ignored it for this time. They're still working on it in a side yeah. effort. Okay. Yeah, because the seven acre in zone E was a good idea, sort of. But well, back in the day, everybody was doing 10 acres, remember? I know that. Well, really, what they were trying to do, though, to have the seven acres is to get away from chopping up ag fields yes. in one acre chunks. The thing is that most of the land, ag land in East Montpelier is now protected. It's either in a land trust or in current use. So that's a pretty small risk. And the problem with the seven acres is then farmers sold off 10 acre chunks or seven acre chunks and then people put houses right in the middle of the field. Right. So it didn't work, especially from a farming point of view. All of a sudden you're stuck with trying to mow around driveways, power poles, this and that, the field is almost useless. But the landowner's like, fuck, I mean, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> We've got like, you know, 10 acres of lawn. What are we gonna do here? Right. And I'm like, I can't get around the driveway or I can't get around the power pole. I can't spread manure in your front yard. So it, something needs to be done with it. No, that was that was a big mistake doing 10 acre lots because yeah. like you said, exactly. Yeah. Acre lots would have worked out better because yes. then you could have just had, you could have had zones where you may, might have put in like five houses and had five, or, or, or one acre lot. you could have allow one acre zoning in zone E, but have requirements. They can't put them in the middle of the field. Just like you objected to that subdivision on the farm I own on Clark Farm, they put the lot right in the middle of the field, and now the driveway will go right in through the middle of the field. The field, all of a sudden, you can't use it. And remember, you went to the planning commission, or the DRB hearing about that, and said, can't you cite it differently? But you weren't successful. But we need to have requirements or conditions on development in ag areas, but make the lot size small. Well, it worked out to it. But anyway, they haven't done it yet. So I was just curious about that. Anyway, I don't want to monopolize anybody's time here. So what, what do we have? What else do we have? Well, I have additional questions, but I, I've already have, spoken quite a lot. bit. So yeah. I'd like to give other people a chance. Yeah, before Amy I and Judith, what, do you have some comments? I'm, I'm frankly, I'm still kind of digesting it, to be honest. Okay. And Amy, are you still digesting? Likewise, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I read through it to plenty of notes, but I didn't find anything. Carl, Carl and I have lots to yeah. say. <laughs> so I have, a que I have some questions about section 3.11, which is on page 27, about parking and loading requirements, specifically about the parking requirements. Um, what page what, is it on? Sorry. Uh, page 27. 27. I'm going to try to read it this way. What, um, what existing problems is this designed to solve? Better question for Zach when he comes back if you want him to. Okay. But the planning philosophy around parking spaces has changed. The, the isolated you know, one and a half spaces for this, two spaces for that format is no longer um, in vogue, and they're more apt to go more free form, using street parking, using public parking that's available, that type of thing. So you're not going to get those long charts that you used to get, and what they're trying to do is kind of do a, a piecemeal approach. They're keeping the old regs, but trying to tone them down. 
Isn't table 3.1 an example? That's what I'm saying. They're trying that... to tone it down. They didn't go whole hog. Okay. But they're trying to tone it down. And then if you read the the new village, I don't have the names down yet, the, the zones that cover this slot, okay. there's extra um, discussion on that. Okay. So as I said, they're they're trying to kind of have it both ways. Hmm. They're working toward, but they're just playing with this right now. Okay. So things have been just toned down, to but it's not parking yet. space. So, you, so basically, what you're saying is more flexibility when someone comes in, That's applying for a business down. permit or whatever about the parking requirement. So because the parking requirement was on the honors before. Only so to because I know that we've had discussion well this one on, on the DRB or planning commission, people have come in and were like, obtain. Oh, do you have eight parking places or do you have enough parking mm -hmm. for blah blah blah? Mm -hmm. So that's I think is what Bruce is saying, is that now we have the flexibility to say, yes, you can have your business, you can use some different parking. Well uh, I will areas. I will reread this with that in mind then, because what jumped out at me was one, I wasn't familiar with the discussion of yeah. parking problems in, in oh, yeah. particular, perhaps because I haven't been on the DRB. Um, but two, uh, you know, I'm in line with that movement in parking philosophy that Bruce described. Yes. And I want to avoid things like there was that silly case, uh, I'm not sure how it was resolved in Montpelier years ago, where uh, a homeowner on Main Street wanted to rent out some rooms as offices. To somebody, and she was required to put in parking yep. for them to get that permission. Right. She said, "Well, look, it could be somebody. You want to have a walk, walkable downtown. It could be somebody who's walking to work. Right. Uh, or you know, if somebody's not walking to work, I could rent parking from a church that right. doesn't have a lot that's not used much on weekdays. And at least initially, there was pushback from the city. I, I want to avoid that. Well, that's the way I, it was that, that way in East Montpelier too." Okay. People came in uh, for a permit to have a business, and we're all over them about the parking. Mm -hmm. And so what they're trying to do is make it easier for a business to have a business in East Montpelier without the onerous parking requirements. They just need to come up maybe with an idea. Yeah, um, well, the parking there needs to be a conversation about it is what yeah. people are saying. Yeah. But there's flexibility within that now. Yeah. So my suggestion, if you really want to see what they've changed, is to compare charts. Right, okay. Because that's when you'll see that they've tried to... Tone it down. Yeah. Okay. But Thank it's you. certainly not gone. Yep. Yeah. That's a good catch on that. Because mm -hmm. that, that has been an issue. Um, oh. So I see there's some um, comments or changes to the PRD, PUD aspect. Well, that was the number one change, what you just said. The PRD is gone. Okay. It's all the PUD. PUD. Okay. But yes, there, there's there been some refinement, because ours was kind of loosey-goosey. Okay. They've added some structure to it. Can you tell me what that is? Yeah. Let me read for could, could somebody explain what planned unit development is? Just so no, it, it's page. a good thing to talk about. Yeah. Yeah, it is, it absolutely. Yeah. So it's the... The same concept that we've discussed before, that, that you want to have um, ways around the strict regulations when there are more um, appealing options for condos, yeah. for multifamily residences, any of that type of thing. Yeah. Or even the Shapiro, uh, yep. Friedman, Dillon Road thing. Yep. Uh, that's a PRD. Back in the day when PRD was still acceptable to say. Uh, PUD is planned unit development. That's the phrase now. It was planned residential development before. And, PRD. Yeah. and that's not acceptable to say that. It's just been overrun. Yeah. It's, it's one size fits all now rather than trying to figure out the what's the difference. Planned unit development yeah. used to have commercial aspects and the planned okay. residential didn't. Okay. Uh, now they just wiped that all out. Okay. They're all one. Okay. Uh, but really, what we had before was just that very um, simple, um, basically a density waiver. Uh, if you wanted to do 10 lots in 40 acres in zone E, you had to do the math, see if you could do a PRP Plain you had to at the time, uh, and fit it in. Mm -hmm. This is a little more refined. It gives more expectations on 
PUDs, nothing, I don't think it changes one whit how it affects us. Okay. It's just altered the way it's phrased and the way it's organized. Okay, if so you look at all of the old section, you'll see a lot of it's been cut and pasted from X to Y to okay. Z, uh, but it's still there. It's okay. just organized differently. <laughs> okay, so just to, just to be clear, on a PUD, say we did it in zone C, which is three acre minimum, that's mm -hmm. right? Would you have to have three acres for each unit that you were putting in one corner of the bigger piece of property? No, you'd have to have the density available. So if you had 100 acres yeah. and you wanted to put in 10 units, yeah. bad match. That's 10 acres. Uh, <laughs> That's what yeah, <laughs> What's 30, 30 acres. acres want to put in 10, 10 units <laughs> and you want to put them all in one that corner. one corner. Yes. Could you do you it? You have the density available for the three acre zone to do yeah. it. And you have the flexibility under the PUD to put it in one place. To put it in one place. But you're still saying you have to have the acreage requirement mm -hmm. for the yes. whole thing. Oh, excuse, yeah. excuse me, there's someone in the waiting room. Oh. Gosh, you can't expect me to talk. And... No, well, no, you can't. <laughs> so I would, I would think that one reason you wouldn't want, you, you wouldn't, you might have wastewater issues anyway, having them clumped together too as well. Well, no, but if that's you, why you got a wastewater have... requirement. That's why you have to have If that you're going to put a PUD in, you have to have gross acreage. So I'm not sure that, I guess it's okay, but on the other hand, it doesn't lend itself to putting in affordable housing in one unit on a smaller piece of land. You may not you ever be able to do, do that anyway because of constraints of the soils. Yeah, but just say you met the wastewater requirement. You could put 10 units on three acres. So this so isn't a variance it. provision. Never has been. This is a way to cluster or yes, you know, I get blow it. through some of the standards. Right. So not no. building in the middle of the field. Oh no. Right. So you mentioned the density bonus that White yeah. Pines got. You're saying that's out now? That you'd have to read it because there's a few sections, mm -hmm. but it's different now. Okay. Uh, and again, you'd have to. I love this discussion. It's all right there. <laughs> uh, okay. The way they phrased it, they have the general standards laid out. And you can have a density bonus for uh, the village zones have one kind of density bonus which can be significant up to 100%, so basically double the number of units. Um, Non-village, you can get a density bonus of up to 25%. And... Uh, 25% That is what they got. They only needed a very tiny amount. Right. Uh, they were within an acre and a half of being I think they had 40 acres and they wanted six units yeah. and uh, so they needed just a, as it was, a tiny amount to get up It to was the, seven acres. Yeah, seven okay. acres. Yeah. 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 One thing they did wipe out, and this was a discussion that took a while to get through, we used to have an expectation of a greater density bonus for um, affordable housing mm -hmm. and that's gone. Oh. Uh, mostly because we couldn't police the concept. Right. Yeah, um, could, where's the definition for affordable, yeah. basically? And how do you follow well, up? How do you keep it that way? Yeah. Right. No uh, way. So they tossed that, they made the village far more flexible, and then the outline kind of held the same okay. bonus. Okay. Oh. All right. Well, that's pretty helpful. Um, we probably ought to move on. We've got people waiting, but uh, it was a good discussion. Yeah. So, so what's the next, next step? step? <laughs> You'll what's be the here. next step? <laughs> we Should we ask is that PC Chair Zach Sullivan to attend? Oh, he's already, uh, no, he's scheduled to attend if we determine that it's necessary. So the, the way that's playing out, they have their town plan hearing on uh, Wednesday, oh, Thursday, uh, on the 5th. He may be ready on the 16th to pass off the town plan. Hmm. So if you want him to 
if you have something for him for the zoning regs and want him to to go into that then you very well same. could be here okay, okay so the town plan changes 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 amendments revisions are whatever. the ones more specific to the cell towers yes yes there's a tiny change in here but it's of right. no account right the bulk of it is in the town plan that yep. new section so he's going to present it to the board yeah uh, assuming everything goes well yes on Thursday yeah he'll come on the 16th to present it basically pass it off to you yes yeah um, so if we've got questions about this at that point we can ask him. you could yeah which I think is a good idea okay all right yep fallback plan if he doesn't if he doesn't come if in he's not ready on the 16th well wait till he's ready to come in with a plan and we'll talk and then about do it at the same we'll do a twofer time. okay yes twofers are more efficient <laughs> well, wait, does that mean then if... Um, could be another couple of weeks. Could be another couple of months if... The town if plan thing doesn't Well, if the town plan thing goes south, then, yeah. yeah, we ought to bring it. Then we'll, we'll bring it back. Yeah. Oh. yeah, no, we do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But my guess is it isn't going to go south. Uh, they seem to have come to a compromised position. Okay. Uh, and I thought you were going to say, can you then put them on dual tracks going forward or do you no. want to have a single track going forward? No, I, I want him in to talk about this yes. before several gotcha. months have gone by. Yeah, yes. so do I. Yeah. But I think that the town plan thing is going to come to fruition yeah. and that's going to work. If it doesn't work, then we'll have him in, in sooner. Yeah. 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 Okay. Good? Yeah. Good. Everyone's on board with that? Okay. The next thing. Uh, 7.30. D, discussion on East Montpelier Fire Department projects, consideration of East Montpelier Fire Department fire engine purchase plan. Ty is here. Uh, oh, Ty. You needed I some... I haven't met you. I'm Ty. I'm the Hi, fire chief. I'm Jeannie Jenkins. I'm the new town administrator. The new town administrator. Welcome Thank you. Okay. Uh, so you won a commitment or something. And I saw yeah. your emails. <laughs> yes, you saw the emails. Yeah, so we put in an official request for uh, East Montpelier to allocate the funds that were voted at town meeting this year towards the purchase of the truck. Mm -hmm. and the, I don't have the official number with me. It was 133. 133333. There we go. That's the official number. Um, so it's available for transfer at any time. Do we? I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, that, I'm just reading off the memo, and that's in line with the emails that have been going back and forth. Board just needs to determine how it wants to handle this. Transfer to you. Right. We kind of outlined the timeline on the truck. Yep. In the email that I sent. Yep. What would you say, want to say, June? Um, there are options for um, the method or the timing of the payment has the... Are you looking for us to make a recommendation? Are you making a recommendation? Because when we're going to have the funds available kind of changes depending upon the method or the timing of payment. I think when are you looking for the money, honey? Well, there, so there's the op <laughs> So in the email, the option is to uh, pay for the chassis when the chassis is delivered to Toyn. And that number is in there. I, gave you, I think I gave you that in the Times. Yeah, and one of the papers, yeah, I apologize, I didn't bring my papers with me. One of the papers had the um, amount was like 119000 You should have had two pages. You had the email and then yeah. I sent you a Yeah, I don't have that to in front of me. But. On the bottom, there was a... a okay, so you were looking for the money from East Montpelier to pay for the chassis we came in? Well, that's one of the options. So if you, we is that the best so we have, I mean, that gives a little bit of a discount back off the chassis portion. There's a little bit of savings. I right. think it's maybe a little less than three thousand dollars. Yeah. Um, other good. than that, you know, in terms of paying for the whole truck, we could pay for the whole thing hundred percent on delivery with no chassis payment. But I think we feel it's better to pay for the chassis payment when that's delivered, and then pay for the remaining balance when the truck is delivered. When is that okay. likely to be delivered? You know. The chassis is the unknown. But a they're rough estimate, idea? They're estimating 450 days. From now? Yes. I guess we can probably come up with it by then. No, we can come up with it right now. <laughs> so, it just, so if, if it works well for you to give us some money when the chassis comes in, right, and you'll get a discount on that, sounds like that's the best way to do it. 
we have the money. The anticipation is the chassis may have an early 2023 delivery. Okay. Is what they're anticipating right now. Yeah. It'd be a 2024 chassis. Yeah. And that's what they feel the timeline might be. And just to be clear, you're talking about the delivery to them. To them. The chassis. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Correct. Where the place is going to build the rest of the truck. Right. 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 So how much was, how much is that? I think it was 119,000 right around there. So that, that would be the option for that. And then we, then we pay that portion off, the chassis yeah. is done, and then the rest is paid upon delivery of the truck. Right. The, the biggest piece, again, as we discussed at the joint meeting, was um, the payments occurring before the end of FY23, or the towns allocating the monies internally in such a way that it doesn't have to be re-voted for allocation distribution. You mean allocated? To I don't think it has to be re-voted, does it, Bruce? We don't. Yeah. Callus might. Yeah, but callus is callus. Right, but from Ty's perspective, I'm speaking of just general of the whole. We're not going to pay for the whole chassis. Uh, callus is going to come up with some money too. Why? Well, they can come up with the money when they when the trucks are there. They could that theoretically that, do that. that. Is, we that could just pay ours awesome. now. We have the money. Right. I think that's a good idea. Right. Me too. It gives callus more time. They need all the time uh, in the world. Let's take back to now. And say when, when the chassis is delivered. When the chassis is right. delivered. Yeah. We are in a position. You need a motion on it? Money for that. Well, just so you understand how this is playing out, Callis declined to discuss it after last meeting for whatever reason. We're going to a meeting next week with yeah. them. So the thought was they would have already handled this issue before we had to. It didn't happen. So Surprise. essentially you're going to be giving them your game plan and they'll play off of that. That's what we need to do. Judith, you, you had brought these questions up. Does that help you out at all? Yeah, so you're saying that when the chassis, that we, um, what you're asking or the consensus is that we give our share of the chassis payment whenever that is within 180 days or early 2023, whenever that comes, correct? And we're, we're right. here. It, it would be upon delivery of the freight letter chassis to uh, chassis to, to, to toy. And, and and so and the remainder of our share of the contribution would be paid when the final delivery of the complete truck, or are you asking for our whole shebang when the you're paying for the chassis? Well, I th I think it's whatever's the cleanest option for the town. We don't have a, consideration either way specifically on that um, we can we're not looking to sit and bank the money necessarily on our side thinking we're going to gain interest off of it we can take that entire payment and pay the 133333 to toy at the delivery of the chassis as well so that it just basically transfers through you guys are done with the payment versus having to do one allocation then come back later on do another allocation for the remaining so dollars. then callus picks up the rest and then callus would pay their portion well, when we pay ours it just gives callus more time yeah because we're not going to sit there and worry about callus's share of the chassis we just need to pay for the chassis with our money and that's fine but the question is do we do it in two payments bruce the 119 versus and then another fourteen thousand later. again who cares i don't care it, it is easier to do it once that's why we'll just do it once yeah, yeah. so we're just Okay. Gonna pay the bill when it comes to you, so, and we'll get a discount on that by paying it a little bit early. So, do we need a consensus or a vote? So, wait. Are you suggesting that we not only pay our portion, but Callis and Callis's portion of the chassis, but also we just pay. hand over to the fire department the whole 133? Give the 133 to fire fire department. Uh -huh. They'll take the 119 and pay for the chassis. Uh -huh. It gives Callis more time to come up with their money in the ducks in a row, so they can pay their money when the whole bill comes in. They don't have to pay one third of the chassis when it comes in. That's a pain right. in the neck. I think that's and there's the nothing coolest. to us because we have the money sitting there. We're not gonna go chase cows for one third of the 119. And they don't want to do it either and neither we shouldn't have to either. So we're gonna give the 133 to the fire department when they need it, they'll pay for the chassis out of our money. And when the whole bill comes due, they'll right. go chase cows for the remainder. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Yep. And our and then we'll have our note that's coming from North Country. Yes. It's just an easy, portion. clean way for us to do it, and then you're done coming to us, and you don't have to worry about it, that portion of the money. We should. Callus, you can deal with. 
we should be able to give a 30 day notice, I believe, on delivery of the truck time. We should have that narrowed down close enough at that point yeah. when that chassis would be happening. Yeah, but the concept, I, I personally think that's what we should do. I don't know how everyone else thinks about it. It's an easy way and it's a good plan for you. I have no problem with it. Why, why do we think that Callis is going to have problems coming up with this money that they voted to? No, Callis no. will come up with the money. But it gives them some time. They may have to borrow the money. Well, they don't even have a treasure now, right? Right. So they've got 450, well, how many days do they have to come up with the money for the bill? When's that going to happen? Well, I think that, so based on the discussion, well, so the final bill would be upon delivery. Yes, so I that's understand. all going to come from, yeah. you know, they could build it, depending on where they're at, as fast as 90 days after the chassis oh, is okay. delivered. Whether that really occurs that quickly or not, it's going to... So we're saying roughly 500 days. days or something. That's what they're at. They're yeah. Right now in the contract, a year and a half. 50 days. Is what a year and a half. But it gives Cal's time to borrow the money and go through their painful process. Right. But they already have a year to do that, right? No. Yes. But <laughs> this is an easy way for us to get the bill going. If you don't agree with it, it's a clean way. And I think the other yes. thing you remember from the discussion that the... The joint meeting was, you know, again, they need to be able to allocate those monies to be whatever fashion they need to within yeah. FY23. You have yes. to obligate it. Right. Yes. And secure whatever loan or no. Yeah, it's need. easier for them, actually, because then they don't have to be splitting up the bill. Right. Right. Exactly. They don't have to come up with blah, blah, and then blah, blah later on. Right. So. Um, is there any risk that after we pay for the chassis, um, Shaker Lee will go bust and they won't be able to finish or they won't be able to get the supplies needed to complete the truck so oh, that we're left kind of, we, we have a nice uh, chassis, but nothing else. Um, can you hold on a second? Um, I apologize. I have to go to my prayer at Lao Young Road. And uh, the yeah. answer to your question is we don't feel that there's a risk necessary. If we were to take out a bond, it would require an additional $4,500 or so that the towns would have to split. Yeah. All right. So, okay. Anyways, got to go to the barn fire. So, they get so you can have it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, so, you could have an insurance bond due to that if we wanted tonight, to. If we can. That'd be another 4000 bucks. Be in touch. Thank you. But they don't feel it, that he just said he didn't feel that it was a risk. Well, it's, you're still going to have to pay. You could still, okay, so you don't have to pay for chassis when it comes in. You could wait until the whole truck is built. It's just that you don't get the discount on paying oh, for that. Oh, okay, so wasn't he, didn't, but he mentioned a bond, a performance bond probably. Yeah, I guess so. Insurance bond. There, yeah. is, a, there is a bond. The, uh, it's in this document somewhere. He gave us prices for it. Oh, four four thousand two hundred and forty three dollars. If you get insurance to cover the to right. cover in case they do fail, it's going to cost you another four grand. Yeah, that's. Yeah. When was the last time something failed? Uh, probably what, Middlesex Fire Equipment or somebody. Well, okay. isn't it more? You, the chassis will be under their insurance. Yeah. When it's and that's when we're paying. Yeah. So there's going to be multiple protection things in there at that time. But I, I guess what happens if they don't build the, the part that goes on top of the chassis? The they, go of the they go out of business. What happens then? Yeah. Well, you still do have we, the chassis. You don't want to pay anything. Oh. Do we? Do we have a draft of the contract? We have what he sent out, and it's in the it's on the site. Yeah. No, no, uh, it's the just the proposal. Oh. That's all we've seen. Yeah. I'm wondering if he has the contract that we can look at? I don't think they do. Uh, I asked the same thing to Toby today. And basically, they're waiting to know what the timing is going to be that they can then go to this company and get a, a uh, ironclad uh, agreement going forward. They don't even know the price right now. The price has probably gone up. I'd be shocked if it hasn't. So we'll wait till we get a contract? Till they no, get a contract? I, I wouldn't. They're, what they're trying to do is get the approvals and then they'll go back. Nothing's going to change the right. fact that the 
chassis is going to cost in the, the 120 range. Right. And nothing is going to change the fact that they're going to have a $300,000 payment you know, 90 days later or whenever it is. Right. But we um, could approve the concept of prepaying right. and our money going in. That's all right. we're doing. It's 450 days away. Yeah. And we can iron out details later. I'm just looking for on board. Would we like to handle this business this way? I personally think it's a clean way to do it, and we'll get a discount by paying for the chassis, and that would work quite well. But it's over; it's a year and a half away. And so, I'm on board with it. Yeah, I'm on board with the concept. That's that's all that um, that we need at this. Yeah, point. I am. I am too. And I'd love to when they either even have a draft of the contract to have an opportunity to see it, I, just so I we think can yeah. see what the. Fine I think they'd be fine in showing it to you, Judith. That that wasn't the problem. They just don't have it. Yeah, don't have it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I get it. Okay, so it sounds like some of us are on board and you're not. Uh, I'm like, uncomfortable with taking on Calus's portion of the the payments uh, when they have you know until next year at this time approximately to come up with the money. Well, they're still going to have to pay the bill when it comes in. They have to pay their money. Mm -hmm. There's still another bill. This is the first bill, the first stage, which we can get a discount on if we pay the money. It's an easy, clean way for us and if we, to pay for it. And if we pay for the chassis and that costs us, say we, we end up spending $133,000, then, then Calus will come up with the, rest, the other uh, yeah. half, 133000 well, The other is. part of this is, remember what you're approving here, is that you're willing to give the 133 333 right. at the time the chassis is constructed right yeah. the bill right. for the chassis may be 140 right it matter. It might be 120 right it's right it doesn't yeah. matter <laughs> callus can give their money at the same time too if they want to if they want right. to. we're disagreeing for a time that we're going to give the money right and i think that would work it would have worked out that way anyway i mean they're not going to pay the same time he's not billiard pays probably ever well, they will have to at the sooner or later yeah, at the end. The, there is a bill right. ultimately that will come due, and if we haven't paid in the fashion that we're trying to do it, we're still going to have to pay the money then. Right. But this is an easy way for the fire department to make a plan and get a discount, and it's an easy way for us to satisfy our obligation. And I don't think it puts us any more at risk than if we paid waited till the end to pay, and 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 then Cal's didn't pay that. <laughs> As but we withhold our money then? We wouldn't withhold our money because we'd want to follow through with our, with what we plan to do. Well, I don't think there's any risk at all with Cal's paying. It's just, it delays the time that the fire department has to chase them for their money. Right. You know, they're not going to say, they don't want to have to go to Cal and say, well, we're going to need 20000 this day, and then the rest of it then. A cleaner way of doing it is like, let's take these small payers' money when the chassis is ready, we're, you're done. Then we'll go to Cal's and get the lump sum out of them when the thing is due. It's just easy for them. Well, if you're selling it as a way to make life easier for the fire department by having to go to the Cal's select board less, then <laughs> that makes it easy. Well, it is board. kind of. It's, it's, Cal's select board is harder to deal with. Yeah. Um, and they don't want to have... a long time. I mean, that's, I think that's yeah. the... Yeah, and they don't want to go there and have multiple monies coming from them. They would like to just get their money, and they would like to just get our money. Our money is easily had because we have it already. So And Callus has to get a loan. Callus has to get a loan. And that's a painful process. Anything that comes out of Callus is painful. We're trying not to be quite so painful. <laughs> well, especially if it's a loan. Painful, it's fine. <laughs> especially if it's a loan and like you're still looking for a tre town treasurer. Yeah. Twenty five hundred dollar bonus if you guys want to sign on. A hundred. Twenty five no, it's twenty five hundred. Twenty five hundred. Okay. Well fry me's not that good, so maybe I'll try it. Okay. So um <laughs> So are most of us on board with this concept? Okay. Because I'd like to move on to the next I one. am. I am. And one, two, three. Okay. Three of us are. Good. Well. Wow. Okay. So do you want to do a composite motion when we're through all of this, or do you want to, you need a motion for this? So. so make a motion. I don't want to make a motion. You no, I, yeah. <laughs> we will make a motion. <laughs> John, can you make a motion? Oh, God. Uh, I make a motion that, is, that, that, that the town of East Montclair contribute $133,333 for the chassis payment on the new fire truck. When the bill comes due. When the, when the, when, yeah, when the bill comes due. When, when the chassis is delivered. Yes, the chassis bill comes due. <laughs>
and the chassis is delivered. It, it won't come due until it is delivered. Well, so there you go. We made sure of it in our motion. Oh. Yes. Uh, okay, I'm there you go. It. All right. Yeah. Okay, you only need a second for that. I seconded it. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it, they do have it. Talk about painful. Oh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good deliberation. <laughs> yep. Okay. Uh, let me find the agenda here. Let's see. And we can talk about the, I guess we can talk about the East Montpelier Mercy Services bond remainder fund use. No, no, you got a different question first. Oh, okay. Uh, you're also approving, I hope, uh, oh, up to the use. up to use of the capital reserve fund. That will allow them to actually do this contract that we're talking about. Because until then, they don't have authority to actually use the capital reserve. Yeah, so we need an amount, though. We have an approximate amount, and that's why the up to. Okay. Oh, so, okay. What's the amount? Yeah, we're. What's the up to? The up to would be maybe two hundred and fifty, because their target right now is four twenty five. We're giving two hundred. Yeah. So if you approve it to two fifty. Yeah. That gives them a little. Yeah. Fluff. Fluff. Okay. Okay. So the mo what what would the motion look like? Like what, to, to, to commit up to authorize this fire engine, up to two hundred fifty thousand. Yep. Authorize the fire department to purchase a fire. Well, they need to use a capital reserve. Using oh, two hundred fifty thousand of the capital reserve yeah, okay. to purchase a, this yeah. toy. So fire. moved. So there moved. You go. Thank Perfect, you. John. You did a really good job. On that. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we need a second on that. Yeah. So what? One of the things uh, reflecting on the other day with Gina was uh, oh, for. The people who are watching, I think it'd be helpful to actually Restate state it. the motion before we vote on it. So, um, Bruce, do you, do you have a motion written down? Of course not. <laughs> no, it, I have three words written down. So, we're <laughs> authorizing <laughs> the East Montpelier Fire Department to withdraw two hundred fifty thousand, up to two hundred fifty thousand, out of the capital reserve to pay for the new fire engine. Okay, out of their capital reserve. Out of their capital reserve. Okay. Exactly. Uh, I'll second that. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it, they do have it. Uh, so the next thing was on their um, request is using the remainder or some of the remainder for some paving and light fixtures. Um, so that's what I got out of it. Bruce, I've, I've read your second paragraph under that mm. in, in the addendum, uh, the um, annotated agenda. A few times, and maybe I've just read it quickly. A few times. So uh, I, I can explain it very simply. Yeah. Usually, we're the protocol was designed to handle invoices after a concept was already approved, or the fire department just did it and then tried to sell us on the concept after they actually had the invoice in their hands. Mm -hmm. This time, they're they're back to trying to sell us on the concept. Mm -hmm. So. What we're looking at here is to approve conceptually the use of the bond fund for these two projects. Mm -hmm. When the mm -hmm. invoices come in, that's when that fancy protocol we have right. is utilized. Okay. So we talked a lot about the protocol the other day, uh -huh. but it's clear they want approval ahead of time. And this is going to be one of those situations where they go ahead with the project and then come to us after the fact to see if we'll allow the use of the Reserve. I think it makes total sense for us to give them a signal about uh, the, the concept. Yeah. Me yeah. too. Right. Yeah. If they might not do it if we don't yeah. have any money. Yeah. <clears throat> it doesn't fit in the budget. Right. It wasn't in the budget. Right. So. I don't want to have them doing, doing projects that aren't in their budget and, and then have us complain to them that they <laughs> so, did that. So Calus doesn't have veto power. They but. don't have veto power <clears throat> over the invoices when they come in. Right. But whether they have doesn't matter. Again, usually we do this together, and they didn't want to meet jointly. Okay. So Good. you're sending this signal, as Carl said, that you would either agree or don't agree, uh, and hopefully they'll follow suit. Yeah. I agree. They should use it for that. So are we tying this to staying within the 13830 I would. Yeah. Well, actually... Do they have any kind of estimate what it would cost? Well, they told us 12,000 
whatever oh, it is. Okay, so so up to up to thirteen thousand eight hundred and thirty. Yeah, yeah. It'll use up the money. Pretty much. It would be enough. This was a, a paving project and a lighting project, correct? That's yes. correct. Yep. I hope it's using the excess so, bond money that we have sitting around. I mean, I haven't been out there in a while because I missed the last meeting. I mean, is I guess I would just trust that this was something. I mean, the, the fire station is pretty new. I, I mean, it already needs to be repaved. No, no it's just one section that was okay. never paved and it's basically dirt oh, and okay. very muddy and they can't really use it to store vehicles or for parking. So it's just a small patch. And the lighting is that they're, you know, the fluorescent lights and they want to get LED lights and okay. some upgrades like that. Yep, gotcha. Thank you. It's all good. And ESF, what's that? Emergency Services Facility. Okay. Oh, I just thought of that. <laughs> so you guys the, the, the paving is to park the ATV trailer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or RTV or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Right. But whatever. Yeah. It's not going to hurt anything. No. Thing. Pavement's good in Vermont. <laughs> <laughs> There's mud. We, we, can, we can debate or that. Or concrete works. But well, in, I know that, but, but in we this have case, a lot of mud. In this case, we don't need to. No. So just out of curiosity, yes. do you want to limit this to the amount they ask for? Yes. No. As opposed to the amount of what we have left in there. Because they'll spend oh, it all oh, anyway. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let, let's limit it to the amount Yeah. Yeah. So they, they gave us two numbers, the sum of which I think is 12-3. Is, uh, uh-huh. If they spend all of it, then the fund is gone. That's a good thing. <laughs> well, I'd like to see it spend on useful things. Well, the they're, they're spending it for these two things. We'll yeah, but, but, but maybe the pavement comes in a little bit thicker, or the light fixtures went up in price. Stuff goes up in price every day. Sure. Well, so, pavement's so, probably gone up in price. So well, I'd, like, I'd like to have them come in at their original quotes that they gave to us. I'll, and have I'll, some money left over for doing something else. It's a thousand bucks? Are you yeah. kidding me? It's a pain in the neck. <laughs> I'm using up. You like to have pain in the neck, pain in the neck things around. I don't. I like, uh, I like to. I like to pinch taxpayers' pennies. It's, okay. So either the motion's going to read. So up, up to 13,000, <laughs> but I would advocate 13,830. But if everyone has strong feelings about. No, I, people are asking for 12, right? Yes, yes. Three. No, I, I say 13830. So I move to uh, to grant permission to the East Mount Air Fire Department to use uh, up to 13830 the total remaining ESF bond remainder fund for these two projects, the paving and the light fixture upgrade. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it as you have. Okay, so are we done with the you ESF? Are. Are. Mm -hmm. What's that? You are. That's what it looked like to me. Okay. All right. Let's move to the next item. E, discussion on proposed shade tree preservation plan. We only put 10 minutes in here for this, so. Because you aren't. Discussing the plan. Okay. You're discussing how you want to move forward with the okay. plan. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and whether you want to give a signal to the committee. Yep. As to how you're feeling because they're meeting on Thursday. Okay. To discuss the plan. Okay. <laughs> so I'll let everyone else talk first because I do have some thoughts about it. But. After our last meeting, um, just because I missed um, his comments, I had a conversation with Michael. Uh, Dwayne, um, and he had indicated that he would be meeting with um, um, Jeff and the gang um, um, to provide his input regarding kind of the concerns he had regarding the regulatory framework and having kind of the predicate language in there before getting to the kind of regulatory language. And I thought that was a good recommendation. Um, I would, um, I think you know, what I heard from members of the committee last time was that they, you know, heard the, um, some of the questions, comments, concerns of folk and are interested in, um, you know, perhaps making some changes. And so I would, I would leave it to um, the people who have put in a lot of time and work to see if um, they want to make any refinements, improvements, 
to the plan. Um, and I would, you know, I would wait to till we receive word back from them that they're ready for us to act on it. That's that's where I I'm leaning. Okay, what does anybody else have to say? You? No opinion? No, not 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 really. Oh, okay. That's all right. I mean, it doesn't have a huge impact on me. No. I, I have thoughts about it, but I wanna let everyone else talk. I don't want to monopolize the conversations. Well, one of the suggestions or one of the questions uh, in the annotated agenda is does the board want to craft a consensus opinion on the plan and send it to right. the, the committee? Uh, I think for us to come up with a consensus uh, opinion would take a long time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think Pretty we sure. have disagreements on the board yes, we do. about it. Uh, right. So I would like to see the committee wrestle with what they heard from us and, and others. And, uh, and see if they can uh, come up with a way forward. I like Paul's comments at the end uh, where he was talking about uh, the, the value of the input and uh, their, uh, you know, the plan not being set in stone. And um, I'd like to see what they come up with. So I just want to say a couple things about it, the plan because I've kind of dug deep into it a little bit. So the reason that this got changed, the legislature changed the law, rule, however you want to call it, statute, is they were trying to remove the ambiguous, the gray areas in the plan because it wasn't clearly defined on who had the right to the trees in the right of way. So what they said was the only trees that were protected by the town were the ones that they planted. So then they tasked, they said, in that statute, unless the town had a plan. So this is why the tree committee has come up with a plan that they feel will clearly define the trees in the right of way and what the rules are. So the pushback that we've had from landowners that have trees, land along the roads, is that they do, they feel they want to preserve their right to cut the trees in the town right away. Now that they know that the gray areas have been removed from the statute, they know they have a right to cut those trees or to manage those trees. So the town feels that they'd rather manage, they want to define that right and they want the right to tell the landowners they can't cut those trees. So it's a real struggle because some of these people that are pushing back against the plan are people that perceive they have new rights. They have rights that are now defined, property rights. And I'm kind of in that camp myself. I have land along many roads in East Montpelier. I feel I now have a right to cut that tree that before it was kind of ambiguous. So that so, so I dug a little deeper and I thought, what if we don't have the plan? What if we do not have the plan? Nothing's def defined. So what we'll have is a large population in East Montpelier. They don't own chainsaws anyway. They're probably going to call the town anyway. The town's going to go out there and say, you can't cut the tree or we'll cut the tree, blah, blah, blah. The, the, other, the downside, that, as the town perceives it, for the plan is if someone cuts a tree that the tree warden doesn't approve of in the right of way. That's the only downside to not having the plan, is that once in a while someone will cut a tree in the right of way that the tree warden doesn't approve of, or someone from the town doesn't. But if the, tree, if the town road, if say the um, tree warden wants to cut a tree or manage a piece of land, of, of some trees, in there right away, right now what they have to do is ask the landowner's permission. In the future, they will not have to do that if we have the plan. So I'm saying to myself, what's wrong with us going to ask a landowner, is it okay to cut those trees? I mean, that's kind of a nice thing. They have to ask your permission. If we have the tree plan, they will not have to do that. They will not have to ask your permission to cut trees on your land in the town right away. 
if we don't have the plan, then they have to ask for permission. They have to go to Patrick McCoy and say, can we cut a tree on your land? And he's going to say no or yes. Most people will say fine. They don't have a chainsaw anyway. So I'm not seeing the benefit from the plan, particularly. Anyway, that's my view. Well, no, we you're, can't you're, belabor that because you're getting we have into no the time. substance, and I could reply to that, but yes. I'm not sure that's what. No, no, I'm just that. saying that we need to move on, but I'm saying that there is some dissent among all of us mm -hmm. about the benefit or the non-benefit of the plan, and I'm trying to lay out benefits versus non-benefits. Mm -hmm. But we need to have more discussion, and we don't have the time tonight. Go ahead. I'm. I just. I'm compelled to respond. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> since, since you're talking substance, uh, but I will. I will do so succinctly. Uh, you, Seth, are focusing on the possibility that without the plan, that with the plan, the town would come and, without a landowner's permission, yes. cut down trees. I'm not sure we've heard anything about that happening in the past with the system with the tree warden in place. Uh, my focus on. The plan, the benefit that I see from it is, as I said in the last meeting, we've got in town plan after town plan, we have recognition of the value of the beauty of the roadside trees. And without the plan, as I understand it, then the landowners would have the right to, I could come and I could clear cut those huge maples on Sparrow Farm Road that mm -hmm. are in the town right of way. Mm -hmm. uh, Bruce, exactly. Bruce Chapel could. Yep. I take that section of center road and That's a risk you take. cut yeah. everything down. Mm -hmm. uh, he won't do that. I won't do that. But somebody else might buy it. Yep. And this plan is a way of protecting that scenic beauty. And taking away the landowner's rights. That's what you do. And that's why you have the pushback from the people have come in here. They believe in their rights. And I'm sorry, Seth. We, we heard what you're... I, I appreciate the need to summarize, but I, I guess... I would ask John and Amy what their thoughts on whether we want to take action or whether we want to leave it, um, see whether the, um, the um, folks um, are, will be coming up with some revisions to the plan based upon the input from the public that they saw at the two of those meetings. I'm in favor of allowing um, <laughs> the committee to come up with any potential revisions and then presenting it to us. Um, we, I think Seth's position is clear. Carl's outlined his, but I think the purpose of today is to figure out kind of procedurally what the steps, next steps are. And I'm sorry that I missed the whole hearing and the tree tour at the last meeting. I don't know if I'm super well equipped to really comment on this. Um, I hear all points. Thank you. Okay. Hey, I just want to say, um, I, I think I, I, can't, I kind of agree uh, with Carl that maybe we should, we should allow Paul to, in the, in the committee to go in and, and make, make some changes based on what they heard at those meetings, at the meetings that came up. I'm not, I, I, I can see where Carl's coming from, and I can see where you're coming from, because I, I in my past work experience, dealt with this, and I was a, a deputy tree warden. And, but the, the way that the, the statutes worked then is that the tree warden reviewed and helped take down trees, but they were mostly shade trees in a community that the town had planted. And the only other issue we had was when we went to a right away, road right away, and we started cutting down trees, people sometimes got upset when we cut down big trees. So the, the important thing to do was to follow the statutes and make sure people were aware we're going to be cutting them down and we want to cut them down. And if there's an issue with it, we provided them with their due process. So we didn't end up providing them with due process in a, in a, in a real court. And that was, what the, that was the way the whole process worked. Now it seems like with the changes that have been incorporated in this, essentially what's, what's happening now is the town can just come in and do it. No, that's the plan. I mean, it, well, the plan is the process. So we're allowing the committee to come up with a plan and we can, we can inform how the process works. So the concerns that Seth is raising can be addressed in the plan. And I, so I guess my, my thought is to encourage the committee to um, see if they can incorporate those concerns in the plan. I agree with that. 
Okay, well, let's just see what happens. Yeah, for now. So, yeah, because we don't have the time. To we have a couple committee members here to uh, see what they have to say. Paul's uh, here. Paul's here, but we are way over time. But um, Jeff's house is here. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? Oh, Jeff, Jeff, Jeff what else here, too? Jeff's here, yeah. yeah. Okay. Jeff's house. <laughs> okay. So I guess um, Jeff and Paul, you've heard us talking about the next step, and there seems to be the thought on the board that um, we're going to wait for your some revisions or take our thoughts into account and address them in the next meeting. So um, everyone's anxious to hear from you. You're on mute. <clears throat> Somebody's muted, I guess. They're both muted, but their lips aren't moving. It's <laughs> fine. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. I think Paul's trying to unmute himself. There's Paul. There we go. Oh, you were unmuted, but you remuted again. Paul. <laughs> you did good. <laughs> there, you go. there you are. There you go. Don't touch anything. <laughs> Paul, you're all set. Okay. We can well, the, first thing, the first thing I'd say is <clears throat> uh, you don't, anybody in town here is welcome to come Saturday, uh, Thursday morning <laughs> if, if you want to hear what we're dealing with. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, we're going to talk with Michael and, uh, and, you know, I've haven't called Seth yet, but uh, I guess he probably knows anyway. Uh, but I was going to talk to the other people who were at our last meeting, and just <laughs> let them know that we're doing this and and we're trying to get input so we can figure out a system that'll work. Uh, you know, and the, of course the <laughs> the state complicated things a little bit, I guess. Uh, mixing and matching things so it doesn't, you know, we're trying to sort that out. So <clears throat> uh, I hope at least some of you will, will get there. It'll, we'll only be there for an hour and a half because the listers are coming in. <laughs> we have to vacate the room there. So, <clears throat> but I, I don't see this as it's going to take a little bit to get this worked out. And there's, if we don't get the give and take, then we end up voting on something that nobody feels good about. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> I'm not interested in seeing that happen because I'm interested in seeing the town have good trees uh, <clears throat> that people appreciate. So. Anyway, I don't know if Jeff has something he wants to say here, but go to it. Yeah, I think we're a short agenda item, so I didn't want to take any time with this meeting. And I guess we're happy to carry the ball down a little bit further and, and see if uh, we can strike something that uh, makes more people happy. But uh, we'll see. Yep. Well, thank you, guys. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. I don't want um, you to feel that I don't appreciate all the effort you put into this, because I do. I just know that certain people in town feel a certain way, and um, I, I feel that way myself in some ways, too. I mean, I appreciate trees, but I also feel some feelings that we're treading on some people that feel that they have rights. And I'm nervous about taking away rights because we have a lot of rules and regulations that govern our lives every single day. And I'm not feeling that great about putting more rules in place. So just want to say that and good luck at your meeting. All right, well, we'll, we'll see you, I hope, on Thursday. You won't see me on Thursday. I'm trying to spread my work. What's that? 
hire a lot of other people in this town that may not agree with that. I know, that's true. So, it's true. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a push sure. and pull. But when we start putting rules in place that govern everybody's lives, it is, there's a loss there also. So there you go. All right, so I'm going to move on to item F because we're way behind. Um, and that's discussion on East Montpelier personnel policy revisions. Okay, so looking at Bruce's memo, um, we're just talking about the vacation leave stair step chart. The proposal essentially wipes out the chart with the first year number in there after all employees receive the same. See page A of the policy section 15B. This is what we talked about at a previous meeting that Amy wasn't there for. We sensed it was important to Amy from her previous comments, and so we waited until she returned to take it up again. Okay. <laughs> so basically, what we what it was before it was one. It was two weeks for five years, and right. then after that, it added a day. Was it a day every? Yeah, or some such sort of thing. It was a stair. Yeah, it's yeah. a stair, right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I understand. You didn't max out until your 16th And year. so we were going to get rid of the stair and what? Two weeks? It's got a two step staircase, first year 120 hours, and second and subsequent year 144 hours. And then allow people to take vacation leave during their first six months of employment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sounds good to me. Yeah. 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 That's kind of bringing it up with, I think, what the standard is now. I mean, people generally, when they start jobs, get at least three weeks now. So. Okay. So I move to revise the uh, personnel policy as stated, uh, as shown in the draft. What's a better way of phrasing that? As described in the draft? As presented. As presented in the draft. Thank you. <laughs> Good verb. Okay. That's your motion? Mm -hmm. That's my motion. We have a second on that? Second. Uh, Amy, I saw her name, her uh, hand first, so we'll go with Amy in a second. And any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Hi. Hi. Okay. So this is another one of those things that normally we all sign. You all sign. Uh, so when when next you uh, are around, like at the 16th or whenever, uh, the updated version will be out and available to be signed. Okay. okay. Sounds good. All right. Um, discussion on stipend for Green Bay coordinator. Green Up Day, um, not Green Bay. Green Up Day, and that is Chris Recanelli. He wants a good down, wants a step down. And he likes it. He does it for free, right? I mean, he does it for free, but he yeah. was suggesting that given how much trouble he's had, he's been trying to step down for three yeah. years now. I know. Uh, that if you provided a stipend. Our bottom stipend is usually $500. Yeah. If you provide a stipend of something that you can point to, it right. might help. Has he given you a sense of how much time it takes to organize? Well, I can it? tell you that he spends a lot of time outreaching to get free items. Uh, sometimes he has to get a S3 form, to, uh, uh, tax free form, to provide to companies to. Uh -huh and our W-9, he'll hand out. Uh, just trying to get uh, some positive stuff. We always did that for the lunch. Right. And when that fell away, the burden all fell on the one person. Uh -huh. uh, there was no longer a volunteer group that was doing the lunch. Are they doing the lunch now? No. Is the lunch coming back after COVID? Or? I forget if that died in 2020 or before. Because no. I was, I was case. The lunch somewhat died before, but hadn't completely. Okay. Yeah, they were. Uh, okay. Remember, Gene Cates group did it. Uh -huh. And oh. that kind of fell apart uh, five, six, seven years ago. If Paul was still here, he could 
give you a better date. Um, but they remnants of it kept it going up till COVID, and then it fell completely. Uh, whether it comes back, don't know. Didn't try this year. Right. No, they didn't. Try. <clears throat> right. So right now, uh, Chris is already um, doing his his uh, charts for people on roads and yeah. who's going to pick up and all that. I know it's saw you had a front porch forum posting today, trying to get somebody that's willing to drive around again because that's always a wild card. Um, if you ever wondered why your bags magically disappeared from the bottom of your driveway, it's because of the person Chris arranges to do it. Yeah. Uh, either that or the road crew does it the following week, right. however that plays. Yeah. Uh, so I would say he probably puts in 100 hours or more without mm. breaking a sweat uh -huh. this time of year. It's probably more. Uh, and good. then, of course, he's responsible for Green Update itself, right. getting all the volunteers and arranging for the drop-offs and everything. Yeah. And actually dealing with the road crew. Well, it's a great Vermont tradition, and I just love to see everybody out there picking up stuff on the side of the road, and mm -hmm. trailers full of tires that people have gone down into the woods where they've been tossed off of the road, and all sorts of things. It, it really helps beautify the town, and I don't know, $500 sounds like something that might entice some people. Well, it sounds like it's $5 an hour. Certainly not overpaid. <laughs> yeah. but, but the people, so so the cleanup coordinator at $500 would make what uh, the stipend would be for the planning commission or whatever, right? Yes. Yeah. I guess what I'm saying is, it, I don't really know. I don't, are, are stipends true incentives anyway? No. I don't think so. And I, it just kind of seems a little, and I know that he does put in a lot of work and I'm in, being enlightened by that, but it just seems a little bit strange that they would get, that a cleanup coordinator would get the exact same stipend as somebody that goes to multiple meetings for hours and hours a month, but. Well, why don't we just but try it? I, I don't think it's probably an incentive anyway. Yeah, well, why don't we just try it? I mean, we don't have anybody stepping up, so we can, why don't we just go to the next step, yeah. offer a stipend? If no one steps up, then we're like, oh, well, I guess it's not going to work. Right. But if we offer okay. a stipend I mean, and someone you, says, oh, you well, really I'll do it. That that's okay. I, I just don't see the harm in offering a stipend. If it doesn't work as an incentive, then we don't pay yeah, what's, the what's, what's the downside? $500. And, the yeah, 500. okay. I know. I mean, it's, you know, it's not a lot of money or anything, but it just... There is kind of a fairness thing, I guess, but okay. Yeah, I understand it's token, but the downside is we're not going to have anybody. Chris oh, yeah, for sure. But I don't think if you offered $500, you're going to get all of a sudden a, a huge slate of candidates anyway. But, you know, maybe you will. I guess, you know, as you put it, maybe why why not try it? Okay. No harm, no foul as far as I All right. I think from what I was getting from what you were saying, Amy, is kind of, it's kind of putting down the people on a DRB to get the same stipend. Yes, <laughs> that's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> no stipend. Oh, no, there you go. Yeah. I don't think that this, I just don't really think it seems that fair, but. But we don't deal with fairness anymore. You know, we're all over the place. Fair's in August. That's right. <laughs> Okay, so let's go fairness away. <laughs> fairness is not part of the discussion. What we want to do is get a green day, yeah. green update coordinated. Yeah. And if we can offer some, throw some money at it, 500 to You might get Carl to do it. Carl was thinking about it, but as soon as we said there was no meal, he was not interested. <laughs> Was that my take on it? I'm accurate. I'm, I owe five hundred dollars stipend for the green update coordinator starting next year. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Do you made a motion? I did. Okay. And that silenced and everybody. <laughs> we have a second. John seconded. Any happy. further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. <laughs> okay, we have we have four and a half eyes. <laughs> All right, I'm I'm assuming that Amy is sort of on board. 
So we'll say five. Okay. This time around. If it doesn't yeah. work, it's done. <laughs> I'm sorry that that, I, I didn't realize you were that frugal. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> the next item. I just like things to remain dirty is all. That's all. That's, that's what I'm about. Okay, so really what you should address is the people that throw the trash out the windows and unload yes. the tires by the side of the road. Yeah. That's what it's annoying. Yeah. When they put 20 tires. And as Dave Grundy always said, there's people that throw trash and there's people that clean it up. That's probably pretty accurate. It is. Yes. Yeah. 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 All right. Um, let's go to age, just because uh, night is waning on. Discussion on professional oversight of highway projects. Ooh. Yeah, the. Yes. Okay. You said it all right there. <laughs> well, I just read off, but I got to go to your memo, your cheat sheet, so to speak. Okay, so Doug Newton passed away. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Oh. So you're thinking we should Hire possibly somebody? find somebody to do that. I'm, I'm not really thinking anything. What we had. It really easy for a decade. Oh yeah, yeah. And now we don't. We used them too. Yeah. Uh, he didn't charge you if he didn't come out. Well, nobody right. works that way in no. this field. Right. No. <laughs> uh, I wonder if we can um, table this until next time, just because it's eight thirty, and we all might want to consider it. You know, in a little bit more detail. Um, is, is there anything pressing that we need to act on? The, there's nothing about this that is pressing. It, it's just a case of Chase and Chase gave us this um, preliminary proposal. It's not their final proposal. They didn't know how to frame this either. So it's it's just a shot in the dark at this point. But we, we could, could say if there, we have interest, right? We could just say we have interest and they would make a proposal. Well, the, yes, they would actually. That's right. <laughs> That's so what's true. wrong with that? Do they do this for anyone else? They're trying to figure out how to do it too. Okay, so yeah. no, they don't. Uh, they know our county road project. They did their part of it. Yeah. And they know the problem with Doug dying also. Yeah. Uh, and they're trying to fill the gap, but they don't want to put themselves out there as a construction inspection services company. Okay. But they recognize what the issue is. Uh -huh. And. They're just trying something. Uh -huh. And again, they knew the county road project was out there. Right. And there was a lot of elements. This might be a good test case. Yeah, it's a $1.3 million project. Yeah. <laughs> and so, we don't have anybody looking after it. And we have nobody looking after it. So what, what's the harm in having to make a proposal? We can make a decision at that point. You can. We'll, we can try to have it here by the next meeting, and you guys yeah. can figure out what you want to do with it. Right. I'm okay with that. No harm. No harm, no foul. Okay. Sounds good. Um, did you want to think about? So you need a, you need an on-site engineer, project engineer, the, again, or a technician. You, you just need somebody that will look at the concrete and say, ah, because Guthrie doesn't know how to do that. Do you want to think about the possibility of putting out a request for proposals? We already know what they're going to come back with. Well, a lot we more. Yeah. Some will. Some yeah. might not. Like you know? Stantec is what you're talking about in your memo. That was pretty well. That's we. That's our one comparison that we've used recently. Yeah. They're not even around anymore, are they? Stantec. Oh yeah. They um, were du Dufresne Henry, right? No, Stantec is Stantec. Stantec du is Dufresne Henry is got bought up by somebody. I thought it was Stantec, but they made Stantec went to buy the, bought them up. Mm -hmm. But no, they're still out of um, South Burlington like they were. Um, Anyway, there's a lot of engineering firms. There are, and we have a general price range for them. That 10 to 15 percent is is pretty much standard. Every seven million there. is a hundred thousand. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> so we're talking nine thousand. Yes, except okay. we're really talking about the culvert projects. That's the big thing. You wouldn't thing. have an oversight engineer for paving. You don't need it. Right. Right, but the, you're right that the project. For the culverts is a lot less. It's money. more like four hundred thousand. So, you know, ten percent, forty thousand bucks. So that's still a good. That's a pretty good deal. Yeah, yeah. that's a lot of money. Let's go after Chase and Chase and see what they say. Well, that's what I'm but thinking. To see what they come up with. Yeah, the cost is not that much, and we should see what the proposal. Yeah, right. It may be that you want nothing to do with it, and maybe right. Chase and Chase realizes 
this isn't making any sense either for their own people. Mm -hmm. So, so in the proposal, they'll specify what they're going to do yeah. and how much it's going to cost. Yeah. And that's important because we have questions about a project like that. You yeah. can't just let it happen. Right. So they broke it out, but okay. they're they'll break it out more. Yes. Um, but again, the, a more detailed scope yeah. of work would be helpful. You'll never get a a Doug Newton again where they'll just show up when you need them. I understand. Time. Yeah, that was ridiculously, and okay. didn't charge you half what he should. Okay, so I think that we have, uh, I think we have a message that we would like the proposal. Okay. Okay. That's okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do we know of any other retired folks from? Retrain? Trust me, we're reaching out, yeah. but no, yeah. Doug was kind of a one-off. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the way he presented himself was kind of special. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So. How about I? You on board? We're done with H? Yeah. I. Discussion and agreement for town office cleaning services. Uh, 60 bucks a week. You don't have really cheap before, it sounds like. I didn't realize how cheap. How cheap was it before? Two fifteen a month. Yeah. That's really cheap. Oh, there it is. <laughs> I was just trying to find Kennison's janitorial services and I couldn't find them. Um, and because then I looked it's a at one person shop. That's just her name that she okay. uses and she hasn't even uh, registered it at all that I could find. She lives out in Dave Rogers' old um, office building apartment. Oh, the red building, yeah. and the, the, the big old house. No, not going down not the ones down below, but the the first of the two coming back up the hill. The one yeah. where his office was off to the side of it. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Um, she worked mm. for Mike Stone, the Dunright people, uh, and cleaned our office on multiple occasions over the years. Um, but she wasn't the only one. There were a couple others. And we reached out to the group of people that knew this place, and she was the one that was willing to take it on. And is, do, do they come every day or is it once yeah. a week? Weekend. Saturdays, we usually. Yeah. Once a week. Once a week. On the weekend. You know, that's probably not that much by today, you know, it's pretty competitive probably. No, that's good. That's actually, I think that still seems pretty cheap. I mean, we got yeah. off really cheap before and that's yeah. pretty yeah. cheap now. Yeah. And well, she comes on Saturday mornings and she doesn't have to worry about dumpsters. Which she, comes... she actually, yes, yeah. she thought that, that's in her thoughts. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so if anyone doesn't understand what Carl was just implying, we have a, a on-site uh, on garbage pickup on Saturday mornings run here at the town office. And if she times it right, she can utilize that service. Mm -hmm. Service. Um, I, I don't think it's bad. I think we ought, to, we, we ought to go for it since she's done it before. She knows what she's doing. We don't have to train her or anything like that. Do um, you have to sign a contract for a certain length of time, or how does that work? I, I think we would just let her do a yeah. training period and see how it plays. Yeah. Uh, she'll do a more formal offer, but not by much. Yeah. Uh, so you could let her go at any time. You're not signing on for any period. Yeah, sounds good. Do we need a motion? I would, yeah. Okay. I move to accept the, can we call it a proposal? Sure. Mm -hmm. The proposal from Kennison's janitorial service to clean the town office at the, at the rate of $60 a week. Second. Do you have a second of <laughs> that? We have any more discussion about cleaning? Town office. I don't see anything. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 So yeah. just so you understand, she is insured. Uh, yeah. So she's got that coverage. Mm -hmm. And she's been here before. Yeah. She's yeah. a known quantity. Yeah. We know the she price did. is reasonable. We know she's in the country legally. Yeah. Well, yeah. that doesn't really matter, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> as long as the work gets done. For okay. Town employment, I think it does. Does it? Yeah, maybe so. As long as you provide a social security number, yeah. I think you're good. Um, anyway, so we're good. Um, and now we move, I'd like to move to Jay. Discussion on town management, light of COVID-19. Where are we, oh, 
we have it on our agenda because we pledged to discuss it at every, every meeting. meeting. Yeah. So, is there anything new that anyone would like to talk about? Well, I think Bruce has summed it up well. We are uh, in Washington County. We're at, even with this new community level tool, which is more forgiving, as it were, uh, than the old community transmission tool, we're at the high, the highest uh, I know. measurement, um, and much higher than most of the nation. Which um, is odd. Well, it has to do with vaccination rates in this area. I think East Montpelier is a little bit lower than some other counties, except for North Northeast Kingdom. The Northeast Kingdom is low. <laughs> the politics sway that way, swing that way. I was surprised. I think the last time I looked at it was a while ago, but I was kind of surprised that, that we weren't up in the seventy-five percent rate. I just figured East Montpelier would be higher than everybody else. These numbers, I, I thought they were between the work. states and the CDC, yeah. vastly differer, and I haven't gotten to the different two. Oh. A lot of it can have to do with the fact, remember, we're a town with six different town mailing address. Oh, yeah. And that always skews these kind of oh, statistics. I'm, sure. I'm looking at the county level. Oh, sorry. Well, he, he, yeah, no, I think John was commenting that East, East Montpelier, Montpelier is out of whack. Yeah, I was looking at East Montpelier. Okay. 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 But what was the county is a vaccination? Yeah. It is? Yeah. What is it? According to the CDC, I, I can't tell you off the top of my head, but Vermont is just wrong numbers. If Vermont is 85 percent, then Washington County is like 50 percent. Yeah. yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. yeah. It was really low. I was surprised. But, That's but strange. A, but the state has it much higher. Yeah. yeah. And I can I I thought you know Orange or. Yes. <laughs> you know. Or Williamstown. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Or or just you know people I've talked to think that the CDC doesn't have the right numbers for Washington mm. County, mm -hmm. and I've, I've never That's gotten awesome. to yeah. the bottom of that. Orleans, Caledonia, you know, I thought those, I th Caledonia was pretty high, I think. I was surprised. Yeah. But Orleans was low. Well, yeah. Essex was low. Yeah. Orange was low. Yeah. Huh. And so I was you kind think of, that the, vac the vaccination rates usually follow political lines, generally, all over the country? But in any case, we have, we have a spread that we have. Yeah. And we also have run out of the time that the legislature and the governor have given us to have mask mandates. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's not a tool that is realistically open to us. We could pass a new mask mandate if we want, send it on to the governor's office, and he would likely send it back to us and say uh, no. Um, and probably we'd get a lot of blowback from people in town as well. Uh, we could require masks in the municipal office again. Uh, what are municipal staff saying about that? That's the most important constituency I, I see in the office. None of them are wearing them right now. Yeah. Rosie was today. I spoke with her oh, briefly about yeah, this. Thank you. Yeah, yes. Rosie was today. I spoke with her briefly about this this morning, uh, but then someone came in, so I never did get to talk to Denise again. Um, but, uh, you know, I basically just asked Rosie to just let me know. Uh -huh. If there's mm. a decrease of comfort of, yeah, especially in particular the two that are front facing with yeah. the public, right. mm -hmm. um, that you know, yeah. if we need to address something, then please let me know. Rosie said right now, she was she, her words were, "We put a mask on when we feel that we need to." Okay. Yeah. So that's right now they're com they seem to be comfortable with that. Okay. okay. Sounds good. Okay, and Rosie's in the meeting, so she can type up if she has something to add. Yes, Rosie, can please feel free to. China. I agree with what you just said. Um, okay. I, I have various various comfort levels depending upon what I'm doing or whether I'm going to visit my husband or not. Um, considering he's in a nursing home, I try to be as careful as I can. But yeah. for the most part, you know, we we request kindly that people stand in front of the acrylic shield. That's very helpful. Okay. And if you're sick, sick, stay home. Yes. Because it's not always a cold anymore. Yep. Right. Yeah, a lot of people are getting COVID, actually. Yeah. And I know I'm not around them, but it's like, oh, I'm not coming over. I get COVID. Okay. Even the vaccinated, boosted, and the whole deal. Yeah. Definitely. It's playing out like the, for, for healthy individuals who are vaccinated, it's playing out like the, like almost like a flu or a bit, or a nasty cold for like four yeah. days. Yeah. 
All right, so it sounds like no changes, and we'll move to the next item. Um, we have the warrants. The expense warrant? I have these right here. They look um, fine to me. I looked through, I only saw one. There were two warrants? No, it's just one. Yeah, one. yeah there's, there's nothing special on it, really. You got gravel and tires. A few other things. Walmart. Yeah. No big ticket items, really. So what do you want us to do with it? Sign it. This should be here. There you go. Um, we don't have any other business. We don't? Well, we've got a town administrator report. We have personnel matters. Yep. Oh, the on the road is... Yeah, just a reminder that yeah. it's set for 5 p.m. Oh, great. On the 16th. Great. Orca has to bring their backpack and carry their camera on it. Okay. Oh. Can we drive there? Or? You can drive there. You can park. Uh, you know, the, if you go Fitch Road yes. to Donner Road, mm -hmm. there's that little slot to the side that is the road that doesn't look like a road. Mm -hmm. You can park right there. Okay. Just turn around on Kathy's driveway. Yeah. So that's coming in from the Fish Road side. Right. Yes. Coming in from the Callis Wheeler Road side is, <laughs> you'd just be dropping your car off at the end of the road. Yeah. Because it just stops. Yeah. <laughs> what is that for? And I, won't, I won't be at the meeting on the 16th. It's, okay. It's to visit a site to? To just look at the road, see where the curb cut might be, and try to figure out what you want to do with it. So which one was it? That's a donor road. Don't, oh, okay. It's at 5 o'clock and 16. Yeah. Okay. Which is our next meeting. Mm hmm So the meeting is just going to be early. Mm hmm That part of the meeting, and then we'll come back here and do the usual process. Um, so, Bruce, did you want to go over your... Oh, the only yeah. other thing I have listed there is the ARPA funding we did the... Yeah. The checkoff submitted the final report for that March yeah. 31st reporting period. Yeah. So that's all set. If you want to know something about the Z8 report, we can talk about the lovely hearing tomorrow night. But other than that. <laughs> Is that a painful hearing? Shouldn't be. It's actually, I'm happy because Dion Equipment yeah. Services will be there. Yep. Get that one out of the way. Yeah. Uh, and then, as I mentioned to you before, Orchard Valley has got a professional plan set going forward, which is a first. And yep. it's really nice to see. Hmm. Uh, and apparently, they have a master plan that this is step one up. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Cool. So that's it for the DRB here? Yeah, the other part is Mike Brown oh, uh, is barn. putting up a couple of smaller structures behind the big hoop barn. Yeah. And U32 is is uh, replacing some dugouts with bigger versions uh, and putting in a few scoreboards. And somebody is doing a sketch plan review for some sort of subdivision. Me. <laughs> Oh. We're playing a house right in the middle of a 10 acre field. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I hope there's pushback. Because <laughs> that should be illegal. <laughs> uh, all right. So we have so we have personnel matters? We do. Okay. I move to go into executive session under 1 VSA, section 313A3, 
to discuss personnel matters. I'll second that. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Do I appear to have it? Did you have it? So we're we'll going to executive session. Okay. Stop the recording. Thank you. Yeah. Recording stopped. Oh. David is trying to ask something. Sorry, let me turn up. Okay. Recording in progress. On the agenda, it, it mentions your discussion is about the transition of the zoning administrator and transition of the town administrator. I'm I'm wrestling with how that qualifies for executive session or how it qualifies for, you know, the uh, you know the portion of the law that you just cited. I mean, transition isn't the appointment, employment, or evaluation of a public official. Um, And personnel isn't a reason to go into executive session. There's a bet there are a bunch of personnel related reasons to go into executive session, but that's a good question. Um, I I was responding to the suggestion on the uh, annotated agenda that there were issues uh, that would qualify for a uh, executive session. Uh, Bruce, you put that together. Yeah, are there issues? I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> this is sort of the flip way of doing this. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I, I get it. I guess we don't have to. So we don't have to say specifically. We, should say we don't have to say specifically. Specifically, right? No. We should not say specifically. Yeah. Um, just, um, let's all look at that statute just to make sure that we aren't keeping out the press. I thought this was what it was. Uh, right, but, the, the, the statute says the appointment or employment or evaluation of a public office or employee. So it's fairly broad. Um, uh -huh. It's not limited to appointment. So we can, the topic of transition fits within that um, category, which is under um, three of the statute, okay. A, A3. Yeah, that's what we got right now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, thank you for that, Judith. It looks like this falls to the um, requirements for the executive session. Right. The employment of a public officer or employee. Right. So I think okay. that we're safe ground here. Yeah, I'll I'll object for the record. I you know I I hear what you're saying and and part of me thinks that some of what you'll talk about is appropriate for executive session but part of me thinks that some of what you'll talk about isn't um so that's the reason for my objection okay well it, it's it's an important question david and, and open meeting law is uh, is an important part of our democracy here in vermont and uh, i've sat in your position before and probably will again and uh wanting to be in other meetings so uh, I think if, if you or Steve want to have further conversations about this, Steve Pappas want to have further conversations about this, uh, I, I would be happy to have a conversation after this meeting with you. I think right now he's to the meeting. That's right. right. That's right. All right. Okay. So we're going into executive session. Yeah. Turning the recording back on. executive session. Yeah. All right. Coming out of executive session at 9.09 p.m. So we're out. Uh, are we being recorded? Now? Here we are. Okay. We're out of executive session. We are going to take some action. Um, one is we're going to extend the de deadline for the applicants for the zoning administrative position to May 16th. The other action that we took is we are, what was the other one? Then we are going to advertise oh, for a advertise for a minute the DRB, right. the Planning Commission. Yeah. DRB is the Development Review Board, the Planning Commission, and the Select Board. And should we say where we're advertising? We're advertising in the in Front Porch Forum, the Times Argus, the Bridge, and the World. Yep. And for $20 per hour. That's what you said. Do we have any details on that? Yeah. So the person ex is expected to carry hours, not a stipend. Correct. Well, okay. Correct. Right. Carry our minutes. Carry, carry uh, to charge hours. Charge, charge hours. hours. Yeah. Right. Yep. yeah.
I'd like to make a motion that we adjourn. We need a second on that. Amy seconded it. Amy's making another motion. Oh, what's the other motion? Just saying goodbye. Just saying goodbye. <laughs> Any discussion on that? Any discussion on Amy saying goodbye and also... <laughs> I think Judith, Judith wants us to keep meeting a little longer, right, Judith? You want it longer? We can make that happen. No. <laughs> yes. No. All those in right. favor, please say aye. 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 We're adjourned. See you guys. Bye. 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 Thank you for tuning in.